What's up guys, Dylan here. Today is day 19, 100 squats day for 30 days. So like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into this video. So a couple things I wanna talk about today. I wanna to talk about the Vitruvian and the monthly membership. I wanna talk about the back squats versus the um, belt squats. And I wanna talk about just making content for an extended period of time and the feelings that come with that. And I know extended 19, 19 days is, you know, not a lot of days, but it is a lot of days. So let's get into this. So let's first talk about the making content as I'm getting this set up. So there are days where I just don't feel like making a video or making, um, even like doing a hundred squats. I'm just like, ah, I don't really want to. And I mentioned this early on, like those feelings come up and it was interesting, I was feeling that way, especially like over this past weekend, and it can be a combination of things, like when your mind goes to that place where it it, it has like the verbal expression or the, the like, hey, I don't want to do this, where it says that, uh, unless you're one of the like, I don't know, X certain percentage of people that doesn't have an internal uh, dialogue, apparently there's people out there that don't, I definitely do, but uh, uh, if you're one of those people, your mind won't say that, but if you aren't, if your mind does if you do have an internal monologue, Right, there, your mind one day will be like, ah, I don't want to do this, and you don't necessarily know where that comes from, and you'd be cautious when you give credence to that voice. Sometimes you can, um, but it's a feeling when it says that often. And I like to say is like feelings are great, but they just got to be tempered with logic. So you got to apply your logic to the feelings to know if it's accurate or know what's actually trying to teach you. There was a book I read called uh, it was it was. Oh, man, I was looking it up, but it was, it was uh, emotions. And it's basically saying emotions are choices, okay? They're just, they're just like a, a physiological response to a stimulus that you have. And how you choose to express it is totally up to you, okay? And the, the girl gave the example um, of she was on a date with this guy. And she's like, man, I really like this guy. He's amazing. And, uh, you know, and she had a great time with him. It was the first date. And then she goes home and throws up. And so it turns out that uh, her feelings of connection, of butterflies, those things you get and feel when you like, when you like someone you're dating, uh, they weren't necessarily because her and the guy had amazing connection, but they were because she was getting sick. And like, so she felt flushed, like she was getting a little fever. Like, so she, her body was having a, a physiological reaction to being sick and she felt those feelings and interpreted them through the lens of the situation where she was feeling them in the date, right? And she believed they were feelings of connection when in reality, they were more so to do because her body was getting sick. So I, I think that's fascinating. So I was feeling that way over the weekend and I'm like, man, I don't want to do this. Like, you know, I don't necessarily, don't necessarily get as many likes or shares or comments as I would hope, right? And my legs were probably tired. I, I don't really want to do the squats or posts or whatnot. But I, that's, what, that's the point of these challenges. That's the purpose of doing them, is that you have to push through those moments despite whatever feelings. I probably felt that way for like, you know, just like internal thoughts and beliefs about myself, my situation, what I'm doing, what I'm working on. Also just like, my legs are sore. <laughs> They're tired from doing squats every day. Um, and so my legs are, my body is like, hey dude, give us a rest. Right? My body doesn't know that I'm doing the challenge. My body doesn't know it's 30 days. All it knows is like, hey man, like you got lactic acid in your legs. When you, when you tighten your quads, they're sore. They don't feel like they're fresh. So maybe don't do them today. And then all those things add up, or maybe I didn't get enough sleep one day, uh, or you know, I ate something that didn't agree with my body. Who knows? But all those factors come up, and then the internal monologue is like, ah, you don't want to do this thing today. When in reality, you're probably perfectly capable of doing the things. You're probably, you probably should do the things. And you probably shouldn't be negotiating with yourself and with your emotions. Uh, that can be a, t a tough situation to be in. I'm not saying don't listen to your emotions. I'm just saying don't trust your emotions all the time. You know, <laughs> Just uh, temper them with logic. So that was the, uh, the emotions and they come up with creating content and doing that. And it's like there's always going to be a time where you just don't feel like it. But where you just got to grin and bear it, just suck it up and do it. Because... I did it, and then like the next day I felt amazing, and I was like, excited to make content, and excited to do my squats, you know? And so you just, just know you go through these cycles. The next thing I wanna talk about, uh, I said three things, I probably forgot one of them. <laughs> um, 
Oh yeah, it was back squat versus belt squat, and then the membership for Vitruvian. I've had a few people make this comment for the Vitruvian. Um, they're like, yeah, I was sold on this, I was looking at this thing, but then you mentioned that if there's a membership, now I won't buy it. And I'm like, I get it, that makes that's fair, but it's a it's an electronic device. It's got software. Software generally comes with a membership, right? It comes with paying for something. And what you get with the membership is like, you don't need the membership to use the machine, to put on the weight and all that kind of stuff. You don't need the membership, membership for that. You need the membership to get access to the coaching classes that they pay people to film. They pay trainers to use their image and their likeness to go and do the workout programs. Those things cost money. Now it'd be kind of cool if you could buy those programs, you know, like video games and they're just loaded onto the machine. That'd be neat. But they have the Netflix model where you have a subscription and you pay for that. And, you know, it, paying that recurring revenue allows this company to continue existing, I imagine. Right? It's great they sell these machines for what they do. But this is a pretty sophisticated piece of uh, hardware here that they probably don't have too big of profit margins on the machine itself. They probably have more of the profit margins due to the recurring revenue from selling the memberships that give you access to like, the coaching and that kind of stuff that you don't get without the membership. So if you don't need the coaching, that's fine. You don't need it. Don't, don't buy it. Don't pay for the membership. But I like it. I like being able to be like, I don't know what I'm going to do for a workout today and click on a coaching thing and do 15 minutes there. I don't mind that. Right? I, I think it's worth the money to use it, uh, to pay for this thing. You can, get disc you can buy the coaching in bulk and stuff like that to get discounts. The machine won't stop. Like, it's not like the machine will stop working if you don't have the membership. So for those of you that are worried about that, just know it makes the experience better. It helps support the machine, and it's it's not anything out of the ordinary. If you don't want to have a membership for something, don't buy a smart home gym, right? Don't buy one of these things. Buy you know spend the money on traditional weights. I I, I would really not. I don't know if I trust any of these smart home gyms that didn't have some sort of membership fee. Maybe a newer one might have a lifetime price you can pay if you're some, one of the first customers, the, if, if a new one comes out or something like that. The problem there is that you're one of the first customers for one of these machines. If you can accept that that company might not be around for a while, the machine might have faults because it's one of the first iterations of it, well then, hey, go for it. But, uh, you know, if you don't want that, if you want it from a company that's trying to build, to trying, to, trying to innovate, trying to sustain what they're doing, uh, or has a higher chance of sustaining, uh, what they're doing, you know, it's a membership fee, whatever, right? Support the company. Well, you, you know, it's they're supporting you in your workout journey. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to do that, just just get a normal squat rack. I wish it, if I had space, I would I would love a normal squat rack. I love those type of things. I still love this Vitruvian. Like this thing's amazing. Um, but I, I would get a normal squat rack. I saw one that like folds down, so it folds down into a bed, and so you can fold your bed back up and you know do squats. So that was pretty cool. But it was just as expensive as this, and the problem that that has is there's not a membership fee, but it's going to be harder to move because of the weight and all that kind of stuff. Where this thing is 80 pounds and can fit under a bed or move and get into a closet or whatnot. So this thing's very, very portable when it comes to home fitness equipment versus almost everything else. So um, membership, not a big deal. The next thing that I want to talk about is belt squats versus uh, whatever, what they're, uh, back squats. So, big difference between belt squats and back squats that I've learned because I'm it's 19 days in. And I did back squats the other day, which was fantastic to do back squats. Uh, finally was able to with my hand. A little sore when I was putting the hand in this motion to get it back up, but nothing too bad. Um, let me find my belt squat. So, what I noticed is with the doing high reps, lower weight with the back squat, um, I found that the time under tension mode started creating a problem when I would lower down because I'd lower down too fast and it would start reducing the weight at the bottom. I don't necessarily want it to, to reduce the weight uh, and I would have to go a lot slower for it not to reduce that weight. So I put it on old school mode. So that kept the weight and resistance more consistent throughout the full range of motion. That was on the back squat. Uh, I find that I can still use time under tension mode when I'm doing the belt squat and still get my range of motion and, and lower and, and raise it at the pace that I want um, under that mode. So I had to change the mode up. 
then of course back squats can get a little bit more glutes, right? Because I can get in this back position a little bit better. Um, obviously core, because you got to keep your chest up because the weight's on your shoulders, um, you know, and it was a little bit harder to do the volume of reps with the back squats, in part due to the, the weird weight adjustment, but also um, just due to because it uses more of your body because the weight's up higher. Uh, I like back squats, they're still my favorite, but for doing volume, these belt squats are great. Um, the other thing is the back squats do put pressure on your lower back, right? You gotta have a strong core and lower back, and I hadn't been working that as much, so I definitely felt the difference between that doing the back squats for the, on the machine. Um, but other than that, like, they're still fantastic. If you're not encumbered by any sort of injury or ailment or anything like that, I recommend doing, you know, front squats, back squats, belt squats, lunges, and all those variations. Um, I think they're great. But if you, you know, you have any back problem, for sure, the belt squats, fantastic way. Or if you want to get more of that, like, you know, athletic position, skier type movement, these things, because of the position, they definitely target way more of your quads for the workout. Um, definitely more quad dominant. So if you want to get stronger quads and build these, these babies up, right, doing the belt squats is not a bad way to go about it. Um, front squats work the quads as well, but they also, you, they also can limit you for your core strength because you gotta hold the weight up here, right? Or like this for the front squat. So if you wanna just get, isolate those quads a little bit more, these belt squats are fantastic for that. So today we're just gonna do 100 squats, uh, 25 reps to start. I'm gonna start at 75 pounds per side, so 150, and let's get after it. See, I can lower down at that pace. It's a good rhythm. I've been practicing a lot, uh, but my weight on my phone, like the resistance doesn't get reduced, where if I want that pace on the back squats, it did. squats in. I'm going to do my standard 25, 15, 10, 10, 15, 25. It's a real easy way to get the reps in. I can get a little more weight in there. Um, I did, did a little bit heavier with the back squats. Uh, I think, yeah, that was yesterday that I did those. Um, so excited to be back. Excited to be able to mix it up. Excited for day 19. Tomorrow's day 20. Um, Got my dad doing squats, which is fantastic. He tells me about the squat in the morning. He's like, yeah, I did these squats. He hasn't, he hasn't done them on the Vitruvian yet, but he's doing squats. And again, I think the world would be a better place if more people did squats and more people had Bitcoin. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.